Bishr al-Hafi, rahimallah. And why is this man so special? One day in Bishr al-Hafi, he was intoxicated. Uh, he was intoxicated and he was walking the streets. And Bishr al-Hafi, what does he see? He sees this paper while in the state of intoxication. He sees this paper that says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. And he sees people walking over it, so he picks it up. He picks it up out of adab and love and takes it home. And, and to quote from the book, so he found on the road a piece of paper on which was written in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the merciful, and he picked it up with reverence, perfumed it, and placed it in a clean place. So he took it home and put it in a high place, in a clean place, because it had the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that same night, in one narration, that same night he dreamt, in a state of vision, he saw, he saw that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, O oh, Bishr, as you have made my name sweet, as you have glorified my name, I swear by my glory that I will make your name sweet both in this world and the next. Allahu Akbar, this is a man who's in a state of intoxication. But because of that one act of adab, of love. And, and so intensely was he absorbed in con contemplation of Allah after this vision, after this dream, that he never put anything on, this feet, on his feet. And there's two reasons why. So after that vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in that state that he was in, he was not wearing any shoes. And so in one narration it says for his entire life he didn't wear any shoes because that was a state in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicated with him. And that's where he, start, he saw this light of Allah. And another, he said, the reason was that the earth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's carpet and I deem it wrong to tread on his carpet while there is anything between my, my feet and his carpet. And this is one of his practices with his focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the shoes would have been veiled for him. This was his adab. After the state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him mercy, he starts to become a man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, attaches himself to the people of Allah. And he says, three, there are three things, whoever desires to be honored in this world and exalted in the next world, let him shun three things. And I'm going to say them, but they will feel a little harsh. They're, we're not going to take them by their lateral meaning. He gives an explanation. One, no man who knows the way to Allah. Uh, one being, let him not ask a favor of anyone. Two, nor speak ill of anyone. Or three, nor accept an invitation to eat with anyone. And when he explained this, explains this, he says, no man who knows the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask a favor of human beings in the reality that you don't, if you ask for a favor from one another, you don't think this person will give you. You have to have the, the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives. If I go to this brother's house and I ask him for something, I have to have the niyyah or the intention or the tawakkul that Allah is the one who's going to give. And we're all wasilas, we're all intermediaries for one another, connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if, if someone's hosting you, they're, they're hosting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guest and Allah is hosting you, right? So with that, and then number two, he says, the man who speaks ill of anyone is criticizing the decree of Allah. Again, back to the qadr of Allah. And inasmuch as both the individual himself and his actions are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on whom can the blame for an action be thrown except on the agent? So that you don't criticize one another, you don't speak ill of one another, which has become such a continuous habit amongst everyone. Because each person is a creation of Allah, whatever they do is being written at that very second by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we focus on our own selves. And this is the reason why he says we don't speak ill of others. And number third, when he says, nor accept an invitation to eat with anyone, this on the lateral means uh, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a provider. This person is not providing you. It's Allah, but this person is the means of that provision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are very deep spiritual um, elements that we have to consider because that's where our, our, our smaller habits, they start amounting to, to what happens as a societal loss, right? Um, and he says, if, he makes a cre uh, if Allah makes a creature the means of giving you daily bread, do not, regard, do not disregard that Allah is the one who is giving you that daily bread, which has caused, caused to reach you and it belongs just only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. This is a man who was intoxicated, who became such a big saint, 
who, who everyone remembers now because of finding a finding the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and elevating it. And Bishr al-Hafi was once seen in a dream after he passed and he was asked, how did God deal with you? And he replied, my Lord, great and glorious as he showed me his mercy saying, oh Bishr, are you not ashamed before me seeing that you used to fear me with such intensity? This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.